Hello everyone and welcome back to episode 8. My name is Mayron and in this episode I wanted to show you the Blizzard tab feature. Now what I mean by this, if we go into World of Warcraft and open up the character, oh, that was the wrong button. <laughs> uh, yeah, if we open up the character window, we can see here it's got a character tab and a reputations tab. And you'll notice that when I switch between them, the frame is still the same. But the inner frame that they're using to display content is different. So what you need to do is link a frame to a tab. However, the inner frame that we're going to be using is a scroll frame because I want to show you in this episode how to create a scroll bar. I was thinking of showing you the tab system, but it might be a bit overwhelming, so I'm going to leave that for episode 9. Now, I did get some feedback from the last episode where people said it was a bit too hard to grasp the project structure, maybe, um, the namespaces. So maybe I might make a Q&A video and go over that or address any questions you may have. So please create some feedback in the comments, share your thoughts. It's always nice to hear and appreciate that kind of thing because I want to help you guys. So this episode, if you like episode 6, you're going to like this episode because we're taking a, a more graphical user interface approach rather than just the pure logic like in the last one. So I'm going to show you what I mean. I've created the final project. By that I mean the final end result of episode 9 I suppose. So let me just show you that. So if you type atconfig using that slash command that we created in the last episode, you'll see here that the box of the graphical options that we're trying to create, it looks very different now. We have a scrolling frame where you have a scroll bar, so if you mouse up and down you can see that the content moves properly and it's being clipped outside of the box. Clipped just means that some parts of it is being cut off, so we only have this viewable area area for our content. So at the moment, again, it's got those very generic buttons and things we created in episode 6. And at the bottom, you see there's an appearance tab, and there's a tracking tab and a profiles tab. So if I switch between them, you'll notice that it's changing the scroll frame, that inner frame, because the frame at the moment is paired to the tab. So when you click on tracking, it says that, oh, okay, the appearance tab isn't being displayed anymore. Let's hide that and show the new scroll frame. But this scroll frame doesn't actually have any content at the moment. So the basic idea here for the project is there's going to be an appearance tab where you can alter the appearances of tracking bars and icons, customizing the colors, maybe there's some drop down menus, things like that to track our auras, our buffs and debuffs. Now in a tracking, there's going to be maybe like a white list and a black list, or maybe there's an option to track everything so you can control what things should be tracked. And then finally, the profiles tab is the one episode where we're going to be talking about database libraries like um, the Ace library and my own, maybe. And this controls basically how profiles are set. So if you change your profile, then the database is saying, OK, now use this database table and all of the options will be adjusted to the profile that we have selected, which is actually quite a big thing because um, you can change the profile and then all future variables are saved into a table. But we actually have to create our own updating function to do all the updating manually. So that's actually quite a challenge. So this is what the final thing will look like. You may have noticed that the XML template I'm using for the actual mainframe, which we use to give us all of these graphical packages that are already set up by Blizzard, we're just use it, reusing them using a template. I've actually changed it slightly to a more basic, primitive one, because uh, the one that we used uh, in all the other previous episodes, I, I didn't like it as much. It's kind of a personal thing, but I'm going to show you how to switch to that and what I've done to create this. So now I've reverted back to how our current options menu looks like. It looks very different, so now I'm going to show you how to get from this thing here, our old version, to the new version you just saw. So now you should open up the config.lua file, because remember, the create menu is where we basically just shoved all of our existing code. So this is the thing that creates the frames and everything like that, the menu, so this is what we're going to be editing in this episode. So in the previous episode, we used basic frame template with inset, which basically is a template which already builds on top of a more primitive template. And I prefer to use the more primitive one because this one has with inset and we don't really need the inset and I just thought I'm going to change it. So just as a recap mainly, to tell you more about XML frames and how they work, we're going to quickly update this and see what happens. So the new one is called UI Panel Dialog Template. Remember, this is the string that represents the XML environment pointing to an XML global object. 
Remember that the Lura environment and the XML environment don't share the same global namespaces. So you have to refer to this as a string and maybe Blizzard does something in the create frame function internally to sort of communicate with the XML um, environment. So this is why it has to be a string and not an actual global variable name because if it was a global variable name it would be referring to a Lura global variable which it doesn't exist. So we'll save that and we'll reload the UI. So as you can see here, there's some problems. Okay, so it's updated to make it look a bit cleaner, which is what I suggested, but the title, the title is missing and it's all the way over here because it really doesn't know what to do. Now the reason it doesn't know what to do with this is because it's saying that the title, the create font string, so this is a font string, it's assigning the left point of it to something that probably doesn't exist because we're using a title BG which was a variable already attached to the template from the old template we was using so this doesn't really exist anymore and now it's saying parent it to the left of that so if this becomes nil it's going to use the UI parents that's like the default it defaults to the UI parents so it's going to say the left of it parent it to the left of the UI parents and remember the UI parent is the entire screen so that's why it's on the left of the screen using the left points that's why it's like that. So we know that this doesn't exist using that template. So we're going to have to look at the templates to see why this is happening. So if we go into the World of Warcraft directory and we go into Blizzard interface code which we extracted in a previous episode and if you forgot how to do that or you want to update the uh, Lua files and all these files here because we entered a new patch so you might have to extract it again. I think that might be episodes 5 or 6. I can't remember off the top of my head but you might want to do that again follows those instructions. And uh, then we can go into shared XML. I believe it is shared UI panel templates.xml. So now that that's opened up, let's grab the UI panel dialog template and use the finds tool to find it. Okay, so that doesn't exist. That means if it, for any reason, you can never find it in here, it's either this one or you go into interface frame XML and then it's called UI panel templates. I'm not too sure why they separate some with shared XML and some with frame XML, but these are usually the more primitive uh, templates. So let's check this one out instead. Okay, so there it is, we found it. Remember it's virtual, so that means that it's not a real thing. It needs to actually be created using an instance, like a create frame. So now we need to look for the title BG or the title frame because it definitely has one but the naming convention is slightly different. So here it is. It's a texture and it's assigned to the layer, the background layer. And here you'll notice that it's actually kind of different from the last one. It's not using a parent key. It's using a name attribute, which is here. If um, it had a parent key, which is here, this is another way of accessing that element. There are two ways to access an element, either using parent key or the name. The name creates a Lura global variable. So it's saying that uh, when we create an instance using create frame, it's getting the parent global name and then just concatenating it together with title BG. So you actually have to use the global variable name. With the parent key, you can use it as a key to the object. I'm gonna show you what I mean by that. So when we created this instance of UI panel dialog template called UI config, we gave it a global variable name. We called it aura tracker. So if you wanted to use the name of the uh, elements, the title BG elements, then you're gonna have to concatenate title BG to the global name. So you can think of Aura Tracker Config as that dollar sign parent. That's going to become Aura Tracker Config and then title BG. So you can actually just stick it like that and then that's direct access to the title element. So now you can use that title BG element, which is a background texture. So you can do things like this, or a tracker, config, title BG, show. But we don't want to be doing that, that's just an example. The second way of identifying and using an XML region that Blizzard have created for us is through the use of a parent key attribute. If you see a name attribute, that's creating a global variable using that dollar sign parent, but parent key just creates a key which can be used to index the right child frame or region attached to the object, to the template as a whole. So in this case just here, you can see it says font string, parent key title. This is actually pointing to the title font string, so we want to use this. Now in order to use it, because it doesn't actually have a name attribute, but it is important to know that you can use the name attribute and the parent key attribute in the same line, they're just two different ways of accessing the exact same element. But in this example, to use this, we use the reference to the main template, that instance we created, 
and index using the key of title. So remember that if you want to access an element of a table using a key, you just supply those square brackets with the two quotation marks, or you can use the dot parameter if it's just one word. You only use the square brackets and the quotation marks if they've got white space characters in there. So you can do it this way, or just using dot title like this. It's important to remember that when I say objects, I'm also referring to tables. Objects and tables are the same thing in Lura, but objects usually refers to something where you create an instance of a class, like in an object-oriented fashion, and widgets in Lura use meta tables to create instances. So technically a widget is more like an object in a table, but you handle objects and tables in exactly the same way, because Lura doesn't actually have any notation for an object. So just don't get them confused. When I say object, I also mean table, and vice versa. So in actual fact, we could reuse the title element and in this file we've actually created it ourselves. We've created a new font string. That's not actually necessary anymore. So we can actually comment this line out because this panel gives us access to one and we don't have to recreate it. However, when we're setting the point, we should set the point to aura tracker config title BG. So if we place that just here, and obviously we don't need this anymore, so now you can see it's actually using the Blizzard provided one and it's automatically putting it there for us. So if you want to manually override the Blizzard positioned element because they have already set up the points for us. As you can see here, it's using the Blizzard anchors XML tag and it's set in the top left point for us and the top right point. We don't really want this. We want to set the left point. So you're going to have to clear the points first and then set your own. We do this using the clear all points method. So now you can see it's placed exactly where we want it to be, except for it's now yellow rather than white. Now I can show you how to change that as well. It's personal preference, but I might as well show you how to get back to the similar layouts that we had in the previous episodes. So let's change the X offset to six instead. So it's a bit more on the right hand side and we'll set the Y offset to a bit higher to one because it looks a bit too low. So now it looks like it's slightly better positioned. Now we want to set it to white. So we can do this by using the method set font object. This is a method that belongs to the font string widget and we know that title is a font string. And we set the font object to game font highlight. So now it appears as white. So now we've made a few alterations. We're using a new template and we're reusing the title font string that Blizzard has provided to us using the XML template. So we don't have to create our own anymore. Now that that has been cleared up, we can now create a scroll frame. Now scroll frames are kind of tricky because they have a scroll child. Now a scroll child is just a normal frame or whatever you want it to be and you set it as the scroll child to a scroll frame. So you can think of the scroll frame as a window. It renders whatever is viewable through the window onto the child that you've assigned to the scroll frame. So a scroll frame may be of a smaller size, it might have a smaller width and height, and the frame that you attach to the scroll frame acting as the child of that scroll frame. This is going to most likely be a lot larger, otherwise the scrolling feature won't work. It's going to be positioned behind it, and when you use the scroll bar on the scroll frame, if you move it up and down or left to right, horizontally or vertically, you're seeing more of the child elements that you've added or assigned as the scroll child to that scroll frame. So just remember that you need a scroll frame and a scroll child. The scroll frame itself is a new widget and the scroll child is actually just anything you want. It's usually just a normal standard frame. So there is no widget called a scroll child. It just sort of attaches itself, kind of embeds itself behind the scroll frame and then the scroll frame handles all of the clipping. So the first thing we can do is create a scroll frame and then we'll create the scroll child afterwards. Now luckily for us, Blizzard have provided another XML template to handle scroll frames. It's very similar to UI panel dialog template, but this one's just called UI panel scroll frame template. So it's a very low leveled template and most likely it's going to be in the UI panel templates.xml file. And remember that the scroll frame is its own independent widget, so we are using the scroll frame just here. This means that we gain access to more methods, methods that are only provided to a scroll frame. So if we have a look at the widget listings and scroll down a bit, you'll see scroll frame here. You can now have a look at all of the methods. 
so defined methods are ones that are only available to the scroll frame. Inherited methods means the ones that are available to just a standard frame because a scroll frame is like a subset of a frame. It inherits everything from a frame. So these are like the generic ones that you've seen many times before. And now we have things like set scroll child, set sc horizontal scroll. We're not going to be needing a lot of these except from some of the new script handlers. If you see at the bottom, script handlers, you'll see that we now have access to on vertical scroll, which we're going to be using. One method that is really useful in, in addition to this is get vertical scroll range, where zero is the top, you're at the top of the scroll, and the height of the frame, of the child frame, is the limit of the scroll. Like how much can it scroll down to the very bottom? Obviously you don't want to go past the height of the frame, of the child frame, so that's going to be our maximum range. We'll get into that a bit more as we get talk about the scroll child and how it works. So let's have a look at UI panel scroll frame template to see what we have inherited onto the scroll frame that we just created when we created the instance of it. So strangely enough, the only one in the UI panel templates.xml is one where an input scroll frame template, which we are not using, is a bit higher up level and it inherits from the one that we want to be using. So for some reason it's not in this file, the finds tool couldn't find it. Let's go into the shared panel templates instead and see if it's there which it is, which is kind of bizarre because I don't know why Blizzard segments things into the UI panel templates.xml file and then into the shared UI templates, blah, blah, blah. It's a bit weird. So what have we inherited? We've inherited a scroll bar, which is quite interesting because we need to be using a scroll bar and there's already one set up for us. So we will be using this one. And the good news is that there's actually a name attribute and there's also the parent key attribute, meaning there's two ways of accessing this, using a key on the object or just using the global variable name. So it's always quite nice when Blizzard actually provides us a parent key, I personally think. I prefer that instead of using a global variable name. So we're going to be using the parent key to access this. So you can directly access the scroll bar using uiconfig.scrollframe.scrollbar. Before we get to that stage, we really should make the scroll frame itself visible so we can actually see the scroll bar. Because at the moment, this scroll frame has been created, but it hasn't been attached to our UI config frame itself. So we're going to have to set a few points. So these are the points which I have used in the past and I thought that they best align the scroll frame into the dialog BG which is another global variable. So if you remember what I said, aura tracker config, that's the thing that uses the dollar sign parent and then Blizzard have decided to use dialog BG as the rest of the name of that element, the region. So if we go back to the UI panel dialog template, you should see that there's a name attribute which has a dollar sign parent dialog BG. So here it is just here, parent dialog BG. So basically this is the inner frame. This is the frame that you can see just here, the black thing. If we used UI config as our anchor point, it would use the entire thing. We just kind of want the black uh, space inside of it, which is called the dialog BG. It's a bit strange, but you can use textures as the anchor points. They don't actually have to be frames. They can be textures as well. So let's see what that looks like. So now we have our scroll bar, you can just see it, just here, it's on the right hand side, it's in a weird place, and nothing's working at the moment, because all of our buttons and elements are actually being anchored and positioned, not onto the scroll frame, but onto the UI config, so they're not really inside of a child element of the scroll frame. So we're going to have to fix that once we create the child frame, and then set that frame as the child frame of the scroll frame, if you're kind of with me. Hopefully that's not too confusing. And while I'm at it, we should probably make the width of the UI config dialog box to be a bit larger so that it can fit the scroll bar into it. Now, this is a really important thing. When you are creating a frame, which is going to be the child frame of the scroll frame, it has to have its own dimensions. You cannot set the points and just let Blizzard dynamically create the width and height. It actually has to have a fixed width and height in order to inform the scroll bar of the maximum range, so zero to the size of the child. Now scroll bars can move horizontally and vertically, so it actually needs to know the width and the height, even if we are just using the height. We only want to have a vertical scroll, but you need to have these dimensions set. If you look at the documentation on WoW programming under scroll frame, you'll see it says the child frame must always have an absolute size set with either this XML notation or just using set width and set height 
or also set size because set size does set width and set height at the same time so it's the same thing so you can do this in Lura or XML remember you can always just type everything in XML but we haven't actually covered that at the moment so you need this to get the scrolling action working now that we have created the frame which is going to be the child frame of the scroll frame we can now make it official and we do this using set scroll child just like this so now as you can see the scroll bar works but nothing is scrolling now the reason for this should be obvious but just in case it's because all of the elements that we created in the past are being anchored to the UI config uh, main window the main window we, we created so if they're stuck there and statically aligned to it and they have not been positioned inside of the child that just means that when a child is scrolled up and down and it moves with the scroll bar these elements are not going to move up and down with the child so we're going to have to re-anchor everything onto the child when we created the create button function ourselves we passed the UI config as the relative frame up here so create button relative frame and then we positioned it here and you'll notice that the UI config object is being used as the parent when creating these buttons. Now that's a problem as well, because the scroll frame is going to clip all of the child regions. And in actual fact, it's not just going to clip the child frame that's off the edge, that's being used as the scrollable content, but it's going to clip every single child attached to the scroll frame, not the scroll child. This is the reason that the scroll bar may be clipped off and we might have to bring it in later on. And by bring it in, I mean push it more to the left hand side so that it's visible inside of the scroll frame or another alternative is to change the parent of the scroll bar so that the parent is now the actual UI config object the massive frame instead of the scroll frame so that the scroll bar is no longer a child of the scroll frame element so just make sure to change the parent of all of these elements like buttons sliders and checkboxes to uiconfig.scrollframe so that they can be clipped properly. They can be parented to the child as well, it really doesn't matter as long as the hierarchy is so that all of these items are somehow parented to the scroll frame and then also if they want to be moving up and down using the scroll bar then they also have to have the relative frame set to the child because the child is actually the thing that's going to be moving so don't get those mixed up. The parents can be the child or the scroll frame but the uh, relative frame has to be the scroll child. So what we need to do is we need to change this UI config, the relative frame, we need to change that to the child. It doesn't matter too much with everything else because the reset button is being anchored to the save button and that's being anchored to the child. So it's kind of like a chain. It moves around on screen depending on the position of the save button anyway and the save button is moving with the child so it really doesn't matter. So now it's working correctly. You can see that by going up and down everything is moving because that's been attached to the child frame which is actually invisible we never gave the child frame any visible properties so let's just set that to green and see what it looks like so this should create some sort of visible background for us and it's just a very plain green sort of colored background using 0.8 as the opacity or the alpha and it's been attached to every single point meaning that the entire region that this child frame is taken up the background is going to align and fill up the entire thing using settle points so the top left point is in the top left corner and bottom right corner is being aligned to the bottom right corner of the frame so if you wanted to create a graphical texture you usually use set texture and provide it the path to some sort of texture you created and stored inside of your add-on folder but if you use set color texture that's just going to create a new basic solid color for us using RGB color values so now you can see that this green frame represents the entire frame which is the child frame of the scroll frame so one interesting thing you'll note is that yes this texture does get clipped so the texture which is that green background that's the same size as the scroll child and the scroll child is 500 in height so obviously this is fitting in nicely because it's being clipped and there is more of this green texture but you can't see it because it's so big that and it doesn't fit into the scroll frame region so the green area is going to make room for a scroll bar so I've actually purposely set the width of it to 308 
so that there's just a little bit of room on the right hand side for where the scroll bar is going to be positioned. You'll notice that when I scroll up and down, this is some very bizarre behavior because all children frames parented to the scroll frame are not being clipped. And it's very bizarre because you're thinking that the green background is being clipped because you can't see it, but the children are not being clipped because you can see them. So a very bizarre behavior ever since patch 7.1, you have to use a method now, which is a method of the scroll frame. It's called set clips children and you have to set this to true so that the scroll frame is going to clip all of the children as well. And by children, I mean anything that has been created with the create frames function. These type of frames have a parent, but textures have to be attached to a layer onto the existing frame. And for some reason, these are automatically clipped by default. So any region that you attach onto the scroll child, these get clipped by default. So layered regions and frames are a bit different, but they are still both counted as widgets. So it is very confusing, but layered regions encompass things such as textures and font strings. The key difference to tell them apart is, was it put onto a layer or was it created using create frames and given a parent? So once again to recap, children of the scroll frame are not clipped by default but they should be clipped using that method. However textures of the scroll child attached to the scroll frame, these are clipped by default. It's very bizarre but it's important that you grasp this concept. So once you have added that method, set clips children, you'll notice that the scroll bar is now cut off because it was a direct child of the scroll frame like we mentioned earlier. If we look in the documentation of the shared UI panel templates.xml, look at the scroll frame template again, you'll see that it's using a frames tag, meaning that all frames between this tag are frames belonging to the scroll frame, their children. And you can see that the scroll bar is indeed a child. So now you can change the parent of the scroll bar to something else besides the scroll frame, or you can move it so that it is neatly positioned inside of the scroll frame. And I'm gonna choose the latter option so that we can position the scroll bar directly inside of the containing frame, the UI config frame. Like I said earlier when I commented this line out, I said that we're probably going to need this, the scroll bar reference. So we're going to use this reference to the scroll bar to reposition it. So you can see here that I've cleared all of the points, all of the ones that Blizzard themselves have already positioned, and I've set my new points to the top left of the scroll frame, but the X offset is actually pushing it more into the frame rather than out of the frame, so it's coming more to the left. So now you can see just here, the scroll bar is where I said it would be in that nice black area, and all of the elements inside of this green area have been centered horizontally so this scroll frame can be used on every single tab, the appearance tab, the tracking tab, and the profiles tab. However, we are going to use set scroll child to switch the child frame, and the child frame represents the content of a single tab. So we are going to need three frames acting as the content for each tab, and these are going to be switched around using set scroll child to show the right content when we need it to. So now I've talked about how to create a scroll frame using a scroll child and how to use a scroll bar. However, I haven't talked about how to manually edit and alter the mouse wheel event. So we're going to be using an on mouse wheel script. So a script is just a bunch of code and a code is contained within a function. So we need to assign a function onto the on mouse wheel script listener and we are going to attach that listener using the set script method and we're going to attach it onto the scroll frame because the scroll frame has the ability to listen out to on mouse wheel events and it's going to fire the script handler, the function, every time it detects that event, the on mouse wheel event. So the code that I've typed here is going to attach this function and this function is going to be acting as a script handler and it's going to be used every time we mouse wheel up and down our scroll frame. So as you can see here, every time I'm scrolling, it's printing, scrolling into the chat box. But now you can see that it's actually broken. This is because by default, Blizzard provides us with a default script handler to handle the on mouse wheel event. So all we've done with this line is basically overridden it. So using set script, we have said that ignore the blizzard one, let's override it, let's provide our own functionality. You can do another alternative, which is called hooking onto the blizzard script. 
To do this, we use hook script, meaning that we are not going to replace Blizzard's default script handler, we are going to latch onto it. So when Blizzard's script handler is finished executing, it's going to execute the second script handler. And you can do this as many times as you want. You can build a whole chain of functions where it's going to execute the first one which was ever set to it, and then it's going to activate all of those hooked scripts as well. So as you can see, the, the one which causes it to move is Blizzard's working its own magic, and then it's using the scrolling thing, printing it to the chat box like we told it to do. And now a second alternative is to actually override it, but provide the proper functionality. So rather than creating an anonymous function, we will create a local function. To do this, I usually stick with a typical naming convention. I have the name that we want to call it, like the scroll frame, and then you, I have the on mouse wheel, which is the name of the script that this function should handle. You can call this whatever you want, but that's how I would type it. So let's have a look at an on mouse wheel script handler. So this script handler belongs to the scroll frame, and it takes a reference to the frame itself, and something new called a delta. So one means it's a positive direction, and it's scrolling up. Minus one means that it's scrolling down. Now this is really important as well. You should know that positive means that you're scrolling up and negative that is means that you're scrolling down. However, the top minimum value is zero. This means that you're at the top. So it's kind of inverted. If you take a positive direction of one, you're going closer to zero. And if you take in a negative action of down, minus one, you're going down, scrolling down, until you reach the maximum value, the size of the child frame. So in this case, the size of the child frame was 500. So minus one means that you're getting closer to 500. So bear that in mind when I type this function out. It's really important to grasp that. So this is how the function's going to look. It's going to get the current value using self get vertical scroll, because remember we're overriding the blizzard functionality, it's not going to scroll at all. So getting the vertical scroll is going to get the initial scroll value where it's stuck at at the moment, and we're going to have to move it ourselves, hence the bottom line of set vertical scroll, and assigning it the new value. So remember that I said earlier we're going to have to invert it, this is why you need a minus sign. So if the step value is positive, meaning 1, we want to go higher up closer to zero. 20 means that we're going to times 1 by 20 to make the scroll frame actually go a bit quicker. If you want the scrolling action to be slower, you set 20 to a lower number like 2. So I'm going to show you that afterwards, but the point is to invert it and we need some sort of way to check the upper and lower bounds. So if new value is less than zero, meaning that we're at the top, so you can't really go into the minuses, otherwise you'll keep scrolling forever and you'll go higher and higher. That's not what you want to do. You want to stop at zero. So we're going to set it to zero if it is lower than zero. And again, the same thing applies to the top. You can get the height of the child. That could be your upper bounds, but also this function here basically does the same thing. Get vertical scroll range. So let's have a look at this. Returns the scroll frame's maximum vertical bottom scroll position. So you can really just think of this as the height of the scroll child. It's gonna be the exact same thing. They should probably annotate that in the description. And it's saying that if it's larger than that, we don't want it to go past that. So let's just set it back to that. And finally, make sure to actually set the script. So remove our old dummy thing and replace it with a new one. So it's going to use that function and pass it those arguments, self and delta. And also, this line was a bit faulty. I spelt get vertical scroll wrong, and also I used a step value instead. Uh, it should have been delta, I got a bit mixed up. Sometimes when I'm creating this uh, event handler, I decide to rename delta to step, because step makes more sense to me, like which step in which direction. So just make sure that's all correctly set up like it is now, and let's reload again. So as you can see here, mouse wheeling is moving 20 steps at a time. If I set this to 2, it's going to be a lot slower. It's going to move 2 steps every time we mouse wheel. So now look, it's very slow. It takes me a lot of effort to go up and down, so that's going to really frustrate a lot of your users. So try and keep that around 20. And just play with the results. It kind of just depends on how big the scroll child is. If you've got a massive child frame that's attached to the scroll frame, you want to zoom up and down really quickly, so you might want a larger number. So the last thing I'm going to do is quickly just delete this background texture because we don't really need this green indicator anymore. 
and now I'm quickly going to neaten this up so that you can see the things that we've added in this episode. We've created a scroll frame, we've attached a script to it, we've clipped the child regions and because of that we had to reposition the scroll bar, we've created the child and then added the child onto the scroll frame. So I hope that explains how scroll frames work and in the next episode we'll create those tabs. So then we can switch the child of the scroll frame depending on what tab we're on and we're going to use some more XML and Blizzard's hidden functions in order to control how these tabs are grouped together and work together. So remember that this code will be available on GitHub and if you have any questions just let me know in the comments section. This has been Mayron and bye for now.